In this video, we're going to look at the use of the inflected infinitive and its role in a grammatical construction referred to as the infinitive phrase. In the example shown, you have the inflected infinitive in the final place in a clause or sentence. So it's the last element in the clause or sentence. Uh, and we're going to look at an example uh, of the use of this infinitive uh, clause or infinitive phrase, I should say. Um, from an early document, and the link I'll include in the description below the video. Okay. Now, the infinitive of the word help in Old English is help on. And the inflected infinitive of to help is to help on. All right, so the first infinitive here, help on, is found is the dictionary version. Uh, so any dictionary will give you this infinitive form um, and that's the usual form of the verb this version here with the toe in front and the um, on the end the ne here these sorts of endings that have a double ne or e double n e are the inflected infinitive and so the inflected infinitive of help is uh, or help on is to help on Right, now, the sentence, he ordered him to help them, contains the infinitive phrase, him to help them. Okay, he, the subject, the main verb, the first verb, ordered, uh, and then the infinitive phrase, him to help them. All right, he ordered him to help them, and that's the infinitive phrase, him to help them. Now, in this phrase, him, an accusative form, and well, will be in Old English, is the subject of the infinitive to help, and the direct object of to help is them. Okay, uh, of course, over the whole clause, he is the subject, ordered is the first verb, right? Him is the direct object, and them is the indirect object, okay, and the infinitive to help. Now, in Old English, this becomes he hate hine him to help him. Right? He ordered him, them to help. Okay, sounds a bit funny. Uh, to modern English ears, that sounds a bit strange. Him and then them right next to each other. We'll look at why that is in a moment. Hate is the second person singular form of ordered, uh, order or ordered, past tense ordered him to help them so second person singular past tense all right now notice that the verb the second verb has gone to the very end of the clause as following the normal rules in old english um, the first verb is in the second position conjugated and then the second verb goes to the very end in its infinitive form and in this case it's in its inflected infinitive form if there were a third verb, that third verb would then go in the second last position. And if there were a fourth verb, that would go in the third last position. And both the third and the fourth verbs would be in the infinitive form. Okay, now, uh, also the second verb is in the infinitive form, but in the examples we're looking at today, we're looking at the inflected infinitive and its use. All right, so uh, Old English, like Modern English, is a verb second uh, language. Hence the hate here after the subject he, hate ordered. All, right. All Germanic languages are verb second languages. All right, so the basic structure then, a general structure of a clause or a sentence, because a clause can stand on its own as a sentence. Subject, first verb conjugated, the object, indirect object, these two can switch places, by the way. And then the second verb goes to the end in its infinitive form, or as we're using today for this video it's inflected infinitive form okay hey hate hina him to help hana. he ordered him them to help now the object and the direct object sit next to each other that's the accusative and the dative sit next to each other because the verb was forced to go to the end if you look here he uh, he uh, he ordered him to help them that second verb there to help had to go to the end and so it places the him and the them right next to each other.
So we have the subject and the nominative, um, the first verb conjugated form, the person uh, number tense, and we have object, accusative, indirect object, dative, and then the second verb is, in this case in its inflected infinitive form. And that's the pattern we're following. And we're going to look at examples of uses of this inflected infinitive. That's the point of this video. All right, so we can extend our example by adding another independent clause using the conjunction and. Okay, hey, hate, hinna, him, to help and to feed in air. And what's happened here is that um, we've used the coordinating conjunction and, and then we've added a clause of equal grammatic weight. So as this is an independent main primary clause, then we're also adding an independent main primary clause. Now, the subject does not need to be stated here. Um, we don't need to put uh, uh, him uh, to feed them. We don't need to put and him. The subject is implied with this uh, clause here, the subject of which refers back to its antecedent. Okay, him. Okay, so he ordered him to help them and he ordered them to, ordered him, sorry, to feed them. Okay, so we don't need to restate the subject again. Okay, it refers back here. So it's him, Hina, who's been ordered to help them and to feed them. So we don't need to put, uh, we don't need to put hey, hate, Hina, him, to help her and him to feed her. Okay, it's implied. Um, and so that's why there's no subject in that second clause here. Okay, we can use this infinitive clause or accusative with infinitive construction in a variety of ways. Okay, so remember we were talking about this uh, uh, infinitive phrase or clause um, or infinitive instruct, uh, construction, and we can use this in a variety of ways. We might use it to express purpose. So, ut ed sesadare is sad to sawina. Okay, out went the sower to sow his seed. Okay. To sawana, uh, to sow, okay, to to sow. So out went the sower, his seed to sow. All right. In modern English, the to sow bit, the verb bit would be earlier on, okay. But in old English, we push it to the end. It's the second verb. The first verb is erde, went, and we have the adverb in front ut, meaning out went okay so the sower went out um okay we know that the uh, sower sadare is the subject because of the demonstrative se in front and then his seed to sow so here we're using this infinitive construction um his sad to uh as um to express purpose here, okay? So, Tolsawan in this sense expresses purpose. Now, heya ut eada faram hira ham hira fareondum tolsayona. She went out from her home to see her friends. Okay? Expressing purpose. The infinitive construction to see is expressing purpose. All right. Ich will a tha folk tol helpana. I intend to help those people, to help and up. To express necessity, obligation, intention, and causation. Mon sende mek thona kuning to seona. Someone sent me to see the king. Okay, mon, someone, uh, a person, someone sent me, mek, the king to see. All right. He will not bishop hard to under rafona. Okay, he wishes to receive the office of bishop. Okay. Um, is ek to witana. It is also known. Notice in all of these, the inflected infinitive is at the very end. Ich no far shea mia to sejana. Okay. Ich no far shea mia to sejana. I am now greatly ashamed to say. Nu is tima us of salapato a reason. 
Now is the time for us to arise from sleep. See? In modern English, to arise. In old English, it goes to the very end. Okay. Off is from. Salap is sleep. Us is us. Uh, now is the time. Okay. Uh, we can use this infinitive construction to complete the sense of a verb. And begunum tha tovurchena. And then began to work. He eoda thona kuning tosayana. She went to see the king. Okay. He eoda thona king kuning. She went the king. And then the tosayana on the end completes the sense of the verb eoda. I mean, what did she go out for? What what did she do the went for? <laughs> where, did, where did she go? What was the point? And then putting the to sayana on the end makes clear what that point is. Okay. To complete the sense of a noun or adjective. So he haveth an well to of salayana and to ed kuke yena. Okay. He has the power to kill and to restore to life. So the um, noun in this case here is Arnweld, which is authority or power to. So he has the power to kill and to restore to life. All right. So this tall slayer and tall uh, Ed Kukiena um, need, what, what was the point of that? What was this to kill and to restore to life? Okay. It was the power too. So without putting in the infinitive to to of slayana and to ed kukiena, we wouldn't know what he had the power for. He haveth unweld. He haveth unweld. Well, he has the power. What? It it's not complete. Where, where is the rest of the thought? And by adding the inflected infinitive to of slayana, we are completing the meaning of the noun. Uh, and, and also with the second clause as well. All right. Waren atalingus eft to leadum fusa to farrena. The nobles were ready, eager, fusa, to go again to their people. Fusa, ready, eager. Okay, to go to their people. Okay. Um, fusa is uh, an adjective. And it completes the sense. I mean, what, what what were they ready or eager to do? Well, to travel to the people, okay, to the people to go. He haveth anwell sooner to for yuvena. Okay, he has the power to forgive sins. So again, the noun anwell uh, needs to be complete. He has the power and then sins to forgive. Okay. Thus Yeshu name it wurrathe to berne. Whose shoes I am not worthy to wear. Okay. Um, he are fate bear so either harata below to a year tana. Um, their feet will be very quick to spill blood. Proverbs 1 16. A year tana. All right. To a year tana to spill. Okay. Nis that no. Leech hom leecher to weenana ak gast leecher. Okay, this is not to be considered bodily like but spiritually. Okay, se unwell ne'er se well shipper ne'er bear to weenana. Okay, the power, not the honor, is not to be esteemed. So, what matters here is the power, the authority, and not the honor that goes with it. Um. You can read it look here if you look here. Se unwell, ne'er se well a shipper, ne'er bear to weenana. Okay, what matters is the authority, the true authority, and not the honor and all that go the trappings that go with it. Okay, to act as a subject or complement of a sentence. Now, here the inflected infinitive is right at the very beginning because it's been made the subject of the entire sentence. To sitana, this is Jesus talking in the Bible, and so that's the point. To sitana, on mina sawurra than helva, author on wunsataran, nus me ink to sulana, ak tham the hut faram, minum fader yer wod us. 
okay to sit on my right hand that's important this this thing about to sit the subject is to sit okay on my right hand or on my left is not for me to give but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared by my father matthew 20 23. so the subject here this this verb is acting as a subject to sitana on mina sawulza run helva otha on wunsa taran mus me ink to sulana ak tham the hut faram minam fader ye yer wad us okay to sitana and then later on to sulana is to give and that comes to sulana here if you look at the second clause between the two commas that's the second clause um notice that the inflected infinitive is back in its usual place which is right at the very end of the clause okay now here's another one to warchena takna to feorthan helvanyere to work miracles for three years and a half now to work that is the subject here that's important because to work miracles okay so that's and so to warchena has been placed at the front. It's this, although it's an inflected infinitive, a verb, it is acting as a subject. All right, some more examples. If the richten sulth me halaf to etena and the reif to wer yena. If the Lord gives me bread to eat and clothes to wear. Okay, to etena and then coordinating conjunction and a clause of equal grammatical weight. Reif to wer yena. Okay, close to where. If the Lord gives me bread to eat, and then the second clause separated by the coordinating conjunction and and rev to where yena. Nis that us tol kanawena this not is this for us to know. How do I know there's a for in front of it? Us is dative, it can be accusative also, but it's also dative, and in the dative dative rule applies here and so when you translate to modern english you put a preposition in front that preposition is for not is this for us to know that is not for us to know uh, uh, i better say that again but now he didn't know what to do next, but now not know he what to do. Okay. Um, mal is me to run. It is time for me to go. Um, no, may is dative. So when we translate it into modern English, we put a preposition in front as part of the translation. So it is time. Um, time it is is it is for me to go us is so the year and leecher told you here runner we must listen very attentively okay us we must very attentively eagerly to listen uh, if there are thonna see Yerd mid to therea yena, seer thar ek sataf mid to warethiana. It is there then be a rod with which, if there then be a rod with which to chastise, comma, be there also a staff with which to support, be there also a staff with which to support. Okay, if there then be a rod with which to chastise okay and then so on so if thar thona siya yir mid to thare yana siya thar ek sataf mid to warethiana okay he that fear to selena nerde interesting we've got this to selena not in the last place Okay, we've got Navda after that. He had not the money to give. Tol Selena is to give, and Havda is had, but Navda is not had, had not. So he, the money, 
to give not head. Okay, um, that he enough have to etana, that he has enough to eat, that he enough has to eat. Okay, um, there he were the near seer to a latina, though he deserved not to be pardoned, though he deserved not to be pardoned. Ich habe thone meta to etena. I have food to eat. Um, ich ther beach to radena and to lernena and ech to larena. I need books to read and to learn and also to teach. Heo hit he, she it he. Thar of Lachadomus to Halena. She it he need medicines to heal. He walled on here to Tham Childerum Haluda to Radena. They wanted her to the children allowed to read. Okay. Um, and in modern English we'd write they wanted her to read aloud. Um, to the children. Okay, so to told them children to the children allowed to radina to read. Okay, notice here this translating with the red text here, modern English, we to translate that into old English, then this verb here, wanted, becomes the second verb. They is he, second verb is Walden, so past tense, um, third person. Plural, they wanted, walled on, her, here, okay, told them children, haluda, to the children out loud, to read. Okay, so here to read would go to the very end trans and be in the inflected infinitive. Although it doesn't have to be the inflected infinitive, it could just be the infinitive, but in this case, the inflected infinitive. All right, each have a unworld mina saula to a latina. I have power to lay down my life soul. Saula is soul, but to lay down your soul means to lay down your life. Okay, now we have an example from an early Old English document known as the Laws of Haloth Herra and Erdrich. This document is written before 685 AD. The text can be found in here, and uh, I'll include that in the description below this video. So what we have here now is law number four. If cherl, if cherl, aquila berlivendum, possibly that is berlivendum, weaver and baron, richt is that hit, that baron, meder, volhi here, and him man and his feathering machum, will some ne, berichien, ye seller his fair. To hell dinner. Of that he, Tian winter a seer, Tian is ten. If a freeman dies, survived by wife and child, it is right that it, the child, of the mother's care is placed into, and for him, someone among his father's kinsmen is willing a surety to give to maintain his property until he be ten years old. Okay. Um, some interesting uh, this one this maider is the mother um, and it is the uh, gen uh, genitive form of uh, mother and folhie is uh, the mother's care under the care guidance leadership or of the mother um, what else is there uh, now notice here that the end of this clause here starting with and and the seven symbol there represents and, and. Um, that starts a new clause of equal grammatical weight with the first one. Um, so it's a main independent clause. And it finishes at the end of the clause with to held in a to hold, to maintain. Okay. Um, I think I made my point there. If chiaro, aquila, Berlivendum, 
weaver and bairn Richt is that hit that bairn made er volchie and him man an his fettering machum wilsumne berichien ye seller his fair to heldene both that he tien winter seer so example all of these are just examples the inflected infinitive now while the inflective infinitive appears in the final place in all of the examples used so far in this video except one i think i remember there are uses in old english text where this is not the case but there's not many but they are there mana us to sulane on mana handa okay mana sunu son of man is must be given must be given into the hands of men okay this is the genitive here manahanda the hands of men okay uh, and notice it's not at the end uh, the son of man into the hands of men be given it could well have been manasuno on manahanda us to sulana um manasuno us on manahanda Tosulana could have been that, and that would have still made sense as well. Uh, if we put manas suno us on manahanda and then tosulana on the end, it still would have worked as well because the son of man is to be into the hands of men given. So it would still work. But anyway, in the document that I found, the example Bosworth Toller dictionary, I found this example here. Most of the examples have the inflected infinitive at the end, by far the majority of it at the end, but not always. Ich habe the tosegena sum thing. Okay, I have something to tell you. I have you to tell something. Thu wast that ich sum la tilode to liviena to thinus muthus bebed beboda. Sorry, beboda. You know that I always strive to live to your mouth's command, so as to obey every word that came out of your mouth. Uh, and another one here. Swahit is no harathos to sejana be elam tham warud yasalthum. That thara nan wucht on nisthas to wilniana seo. As it is now quick to tell about the earthly blessings, that there be nothing in the world not to see to desire. And so that's our counter examples there, where the inflective infinitive is not at the end. I mean, but then we've seen examples where the inflective infinitive is right at the beginning acting as a subject, so perhaps not a surprise. Okay, that's it then for today. An image of a king looking like Radwald or something like that, with a subtle new mask, making laws out in a public place where all can be seen and heard and can see the king and hear the king. Thank you for